Hey, this is Big Guy DIY Robert. I need to get to that sled to install this new tank. Well, used tank. The filler neck on this uh, on my sled cracked. I guess it's a common problem with the old MXZs in the early 2000s. The bigger problem is they don't make this tank anymore, obviously because of the age. It's also no longer available as a new tank anywhere, as in like old inventory. So after about a year of shopping, I found this online and uh, had to drive two and a half hours to pick up a tank. That cost me 60 bucks. But before I can do this, I need to clean all this so I can get the snowmobile right here. So I'm going to do a little time lapse and see how much I can get cleaned on here. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Sound right, boy. Sound right, boy. Sound right, boy. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy.
sound right, boys. Fill neck. So I'm going to show you how to pull this out. Not that I've done it before, but I've pulled all this stuff out a number of times, so I'm kind of used to it. Um, procedure first will be battery then exhaust this here I think I'm gonna throw in my freezer I had a hell of a time putting it into this when I first purchased it but by throwing it in my freezer it'll shrink it down a little what it does is uh, these over time did not seal correctly the oil would leak out of the top even with a, a new what do you call it here? New thing. New cap. It would still leak. This here, you get a much better seal with that flat surface. And then this is being rubber inside. This seals onto the top because there is a O-ring right here. That seals it in there. So, I guess the next shots will be uh, time lapse of me pulling all this stuff out. All right. out let me show you the area not the easiest thing to come out but there are two points well three points that the tank is secured four no one two three four in a way up here 
Let me back out. Here. Try again. Here, the top part of the tank. The bottom here. And then inside here. And then your fourth is right here, which is held by your uh, antifreeze tank. You got a little slide here. So you can see, so that slides in to this side here. So that was a little on the tricky part. Before I install the new one, <clears throat> or the replacement, I want to be sure that we got the same tank. Because the first thing I noticed when I uh, was taking off this drip shield, it was different on this one. Here's the drip shield from this one, and here's the drip shield from this one. So there's definitely a difference, but Let's fit on there. We got the same hose connection. And then we turn it around. The pump attaches to here. So we got the same here. And I was trying to find a model number on here. But they're so covered with grease. I mean, I would assume it'd be on this side here. Oh, jeez. It's cracked. That looks like a crack right there. I'll have to look into that a little further and see if it is but if we go so far <clears throat> I'm gonna have to take some carburetor cleaner and really clean the inside of this out because this is all just coated with oil everywhere So, plus I got to find the screw I pulled out that held it here. <laughs> I lost it somewhere down in there. Alright, so that's it for now. <clears throat> I'm going to get something to eat. A little hungry, as usual. And we'll come back to this. Well, we're finally getting some snow. We got a nor'easter back in mid-December. Picked up 17 inches, 18 inches, and it was gone in two weeks, or less than that. So uh, this is a second of three storms. First one we got rain. Now we're getting snow. And I think the next one is supposed to be snow as well but uh lord's not lord knows we have had a very bad start to our winter this year in the northeast usually we would be sledding by now but <clears throat> all in new england there's no snow i mean they got some snow but not enough to go riding so as you can see done a little more work on the engine but that's what this video is not gonna cover we're gonna cover the oil tank get that in here so the tricky parts are going to be getting this wiring in this hose connected this nut on here there's a pin 
side. Let's see if we can see it here. Right there, what the oil tank sits on. So we got the nut, the pin, and then this bracket here, the oil tank sits against. And then we got to put this pump on the back side of it. Reconnect the top part for overfill. And then we'll have this back in. <clears throat> now I'll put I'll put photos in, but I was inspecting my old tank and I found it is big crack, about a two and a half inch crack on the back side of the bracket. I'll post pictures of it. What I thought was a crack on this one, it is not. It's just a a cut, probably when they removed it or something. So I used something called a plumbing goop. It's a it's a rubber adhesive that'll stick to anything, whether it's oil or not. But it's um, oil doesn't break it down, gas doesn't break it down. Um, it hardens up. So should that crack, at least I have something on the outside of it to uh, stop it. trying to attach the pump on the back side here.
metric size is uh, nine millimeters for this or three eighths. go there's a difference this tank does not have a hole in the back side for this one hose to attach mine does I'll have to drill it out I have to figure out what size hole that is now so it's a half inch size hole from the factory, you can always you can already see the um, outline of where the hole goes, so it's not a guess. I didn't drill it fast because I wanted to do a slow drill to try to keep the plastic pieces together, which worked. Split the dang thing. So I'll have to see if I can order that part.
light here. So the next thing is trying to get that nut onto that bolt there. I got the pin in its hole. Let's see here, if I can get some light there, you can see it now. Kind of. We got our antifreeze container slid into its slot. So the tank is in place. So it's just a matter of securing it now. Alright. So we'll turn this off for a moment because I'm going to order that part and we'll come back and install that part. Which is this hose here. It's got to go into the back side of the tank here where I drilled the hole in. Alright, so, alright, I ordered a grommet It goes in here. I know I got one in here now, that's the original, but it had split. So, I ordered a new one. There's a website that's really good for getting used parts. It's called Al's Snowmobile. A L S apostrophe no A L apostrophe S in uh, Newport, Vermont. They are a place that has parts well, all the way back to I guess the late '60s, probably. I'm guessing. But uh, <laughs> anyway, that's where I ordered the parts from. I ordered a part from here, and then I had to order parts from my uh, gasket to my Y pipe. But <clears throat> I got the bolt on the front of this down in the bottom on. Uh, I had to use the reach to hold the bolt or the nut to put on the bolt down here, and then slowly turn it on, and then use a uh, socket to get in there because I have cooling pipes or cooling hoses that are in the way so it's very very tight so here's the next thing this came on the original this one here replacement okay this is what I had on mine originally you know I was looking at how the drip part works this one here throws it into the back but this one here has it coming to the front so if you spill any oil you can catch it here at least I kind of like that better the hole for supporting the cable is in the same spot so I'm gonna go with the original from this old tank here so here's the problem is getting my fingers in here to put the uh, bolts up into there's really no space to do it so here's a little trick I'm gonna do when you can't get a bolt to stay in place tape the bolt where did I put them Hoping this tape will hold. Just enough for I can get this in here. Nope. It's not gonna hold. It's all greasy. Oh well. So much for that idea. I guess we'll have to do this the hard way.
Now I'm sticking a rag in here because I tried putting this bolt through before and I ended up dropping it. So this is how I have to put it in. Holding it like this. And I dropped it. get this this way I'm gonna try something different I'm gonna see if I can go from the top down
That's it. That's the installation of a new oil used reservoir. So it's definitely a little time consuming. With the air box out, it definitely made a difference looking on the back side. I needed to remove the air box anyways. Uh, so I can get at the carbs. I want to take these off and check my reeds, make sure they're okay. So here's the oil pump connection. So just this grommet here, I just ordered. So I got a new one coming in. And then we'll just reinstall that. But that's it. So this is Big Guy DIY Robert. Signing it off just for swapping out a uh, oil reservoir. I'm not gonna film the other stuff I'm gonna be working on because there's a lot of videos out there in regards to working on the, the carburetors and the Y-valve. I'm just doing a regular maintenance, or not a regular ma maintenance, a maintenance on my sled I haven't done in quite a few years. And that's these boots tend to deteriorate. They're uh, V-Force 3 plus the reed valves to tend to, the, the rubber de the rubber tends to deteriorate on these and so I'm going to take this apart and just check it because I think it's been four years since I had to replace them but they should be okay I had to uh, fix the steering on this it had come loose it's a bolt here that goes through the frame and holds that steering in place there was a lot of slop in that and it's a through bolt the through bolt that goes all the way and you can see it from underneath the sled right next to the suspension the other thing is I needed to do is pull out the rave valves and I had a leak here coming out of the exhaust so that needed new gaskets so I clean that these surfaces off I've ordered new gaskets for the exhaust to come in the rave valves where are they? My rave valves here. I don't have to replace the gaskets on it because these are new gaskets I got a, a couple years ago and they're a very thick rubber. So they're fine. But you get carbon buildup on these in the corners and on the top. So I just take a wire brush wheel and clean these off so they'll slide nicely. But the springs will all look okay on these screws we all clean up we I clean up before reinstallation for the ray valves but they look good here's the exhaust you see the carbon build up on these this is what I'm waiting for for parts but I'm gonna clean this up maybe repaint it. I got some carbon build up inside there as you can see. Get the light in here. But I'll just scrape that out. I might see if I can get this ceramic coated just so it doesn't rust all the time. Because I repaint that every uh, every like six to eight years and the paint just stinks. It smells and it smokes and everything and it is paint for for these Y valve headers but that's another story one thing I will film <clears throat> is on these old MXZ's this part here cracks let's zoom in here you can see how it's cracking here and it's also cracked on this side. So I'm going to show you what uh, you can do to repair this. I'm not going to go out and buy a whole new one of these pieces. It's uh, you'd have to disassemble all the handlebars. I mean everything just to replace this one piece. 
I'm going to do is I'm going to fabricate a piece of aluminum bracket and that'll be riveted to this and then you'll be able to screw through it. So that'll be a new video on doing that. Now I'm signing off. This is big guy. Have a great evening. Talk to you later. Thumbs up if this helped. If you got any questions, list them below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. If I don't have an answer, at least I'll try to find a reference for you for the answer. All right. Hey, keep the track side down and have fun. See ya.